Welcome to the module on soft tissue injuries. By the end of this module, you will be able to identify commonly injured soft tissues, list the steps for pre-hospital treatment or PHT of closed wound, list the steps for PHT of open wound, list the steps for PHT of eye, ear, nose and neck injuries, describe the steps for PHT of abdominal and genital injuries, Explain the use of dressings and bandages to control bleeding in a specific area of the body and identify the role of volunteers. Let's understand what soft tissue is. Soft tissues connect, support and surround different body organs. Most areas of the body contain soft tissues. Soft tissues include lymph vessels, nerves, blood vessels, fat, muscle, tendons, ligaments, cartilage and other fibrous tissues. The majority of soft tissue injuries are caused by rapid, unexpected or uncontrolled movements as a result of trauma or other factors. However, prolonged overuse or continuously fatigued structures, particularly muscles and tendons, can also cause soft tissue damage. Let's look at the tissues that get frequently injured. These tissues are ligaments, muscles, tendons, nerves, bones and cartilages. Click each image to learn more. Anterior cruciate ligament and medial collateral ligament in the knee, ulnar collateral ligaments in the wrist or hand and interspinous ligaments in the vertebrae are the ligaments that get frequently injured. The muscles that are prone to frequent injury are biceps brachia in the upper arm, rectus femoral in the thigh and transverse abdomens in the abdominals. The patellar tendon in the knee, calcaneal or Achilles tendon in the foot or lower leg and biceps tendon in the shoulder or elbow are the tendons that get injured frequently. The nerves that get injured frequently are brachial plexus in the shoulder, ulnar nerve in the elbow or hand, peroneal nerve in the ankle or foot and cranial nerves I-12 in the head. The femur bone in the leg, humerus in the arm, ribs in the torso, metatarsals I6 in the foot and metacarpals I6 in the hand are bones that get frequently injured. In the cartilages, menace in the knee, intervertebral discs in the spine and acetabulum in the hip get frequently injured. Now, let's take up an activity to check your understanding of the soft tissues. Complete the sentence by selecting the appropriate option and click Submit. Now, let's learn about closed wounds. They are the wounds where the skin is intact not exposing the underlying tissue. Closed wounds can involve superficial harm to the skin or sometimes can be serious with damage to internal organs. Small contusions typically do not require medical attention, but more severe injuries may be fatal. Closed wounds are usually the result of direct blunt trauma from falls or car accidents. Even with the skin intact, the damage can reach down to the underlying muscle, internal organs and bones. There are several signs to recognize closed wounds, 
such as swelling, tenderness, discoloration and possible deformity. Let's next look at the types of closed wounds. The types of closed wounds are contusion, hematoma and crush injury. Click each image to learn more. Contusions are the common types of sports injuries where a direct blunt trauma can damage the small blood vessels and capillaries, muscles and underlying tissue as well as the internal organs and in some cases, bones. Contusions present as a painful bruise with reddish to bluish discoloration that spreads over the injured area of the skin. Hematomas include any injury that damages the small blood vessels and capillaries, resulting in blood collecting and pooling in a limited space. Hematomas typically present as a painful, spongy and rubbery lump-like lesion. It can be small or large, deep inside the body or just under the skin, depending on the severity and site of the trauma. Crush injuries are usually caused by an external high-pressure force that squeezes part of the body between two surfaces. The degree of injury and pain can range from a minor bruise to the destruction of the crushed area of the body depending on the site, size, duration and power of the trauma. In such situations, pre-hospital treatment or PHT is crucial to prevent the injury from becoming life-threatening. So, let's learn about the pre-hospital treatments for closed wounds. Here are several pre-hospital treatment options for closed wounds. Apply the RICE method, that is, rest, ice, compress and elevate. Let's next learn more about the RICE method. Rest is recommended for an initial 24 to 48 hours. After that, moderate activity should start. Apply ice for not more than 20 minutes with intervals of 40 to 45 minutes. Apply this method for a maximum of 48 hours. The compress method aims to reduce edematous swelling. Elevation aims to reduce swelling by increasing return of blood to systematic circulation in veins. Then, Monitor the patient for any rapid changes in vital signs that might indicate internal bleeding, which should be treated by a physician. Provide treatment for shock. Transport the patient to a medical center immediately. Next, let's learn about the types of open wounds. Open wounds typically mean the skin is ruptured or cut and the underlying tissue is visible from outside. An open wound is a tear in the skin or mucous membrane, such as from a knife cut. The most common accidents resulting in open wounds are falls, mishandling of sharp objects, accidents with tools or machinery and road accidents. The types of open wounds are abrasions, lacerations regular and irregular, penetration and puncture wounds, avulsions, amputation, crushing injury may be open or closed, gunshot wounds or impaled object. Click each image to learn more. An abrasion is a skin wound caused by rubbing or scraping the skin against a hard, rough surface. Bleeding in this type of wound is usually limited but the skin must be cleaned to avoid infection. Usually, abrasions include scrapes and scratches and the outer layer of skin is damaged. In such wounds, all layers are not penetrated. A laceration is a wound on the skin. There is no skin loss, unlike an abrasion. Usually, a cut is a wound made by a sharp item such as a glass shard. 
Bleeding from a laceration may be rapid and extensive having the following characteristics, smooth or jagged cut, caused by sharp-edged objects, severe blow or impact with a blunt object, impossible to determine the depth and considerable bleeding. A penetration and puncture wound is a piercing wound that causes a small hole in the tissues. Even if there is slight external bleeding, there may be serious internal bleeding resulting from internal damage to an organ, as in a gunshot wound. An avulsion is a forcible tearing or partial tearing away of tissues. It occurs in such accidents as gunshots, explosions, animal bites or other body crushing accidents. Bleeding is heavy and rapid. The following are the characteristics of avulsion wounds, flaps of skin and loose tissues, completely pulled off and tissue cut off from its oxygen supply. Amputation is the removal of a limb by trauma, medical illness or surgery. As a surgical measure, it is used to control pain or an infection in the affected limb, such as malignancy or gangrene. In some cases, it is carried out on individuals as a preventive measure for such problems. A special case is that of congenital amputation, a congenital disorder where fetal limbs have been cut off by constrictive bands. Traumatic amputations are done when extremities are affected Massive bleeding occurs and blood vessels collapse. Crushing injuries are frequently caused by being crushed beneath a car or by incidents involving machinery, construction or agriculture. 3 to 20% of mass mortality in natural catastrophes, like large earthquakes, are due to crush injuries caused by building collapse and entrapment. The immediate damaging effect of a gunshot wound is typically associated with severe bleeding and with the potential for hypovolemic shock, a condition characterized by inadequate delivery of oxygen to vital organs. In the case of traumatic hypovolemic shock, this failure of adequate oxygen delivery is due to blood loss, as blood is the means of delivering oxygen to the body's constituent parts. Impaled objects are items that have punctured any body part and are still embedded. Depending on the location of the impalement and the size of the object, emergency medical response may be necessary. Here are several pre-hospital treatment options for open wounds. First is to expose the wound it involves removing all clothing and exposing soft tissue and avoiding the removal of clothing by pulling it over the patient's head. The best method is to remove clothing by cutting with trauma scissors. The next step is to control the source of bleeding. It is done by beginning with direct pressure and elevation, using indirect pressure on a suitable pressure point and elevation, if the wound continues to bleed and use a tourniquet only as a last resort. Prevent contamination. Remove debris and contamination around the surface of the wound. Do not try to remove embedded particles. Provide dress and bandage. Use a sterile dressing and secure with a bandage to cover the wound. Additionally, cover the patient and try to keep calm. Provide treatment for shock. Transport the patient to any medical center as soon as possible. Now, let's take up another activity to check your understanding of the open and closed wounds. Identify the closed and open wounds, drag and drop the labels in the appropriate medical case and click Submit.
Now, let's know about the use of dressing and bandages to control bleeding. Dressing refers to any material used to cover a wound that helps control bleeding and aids in the prevention of contamination. Bandage refers to any material used to hold a dressing in place. There are two types of dressing. Occlusive dressing means any water-resistant material applied to a wound to prevent the entry of air and the loss of moisture from internal organs. Bulky dressing means multiple stacked dressings made to form a single dressing of 2 to 3 cm thick such as a thick sanitary towel or any similar material. Here are the procedures for applying dressings and bandages. Dressing is applied to control the bleeding. You must apply the dressing using the aseptic technique. You should cover the wounds completely. Ensure that the dressing and the bandage are firm, fixed, and comfortable but not so tight as to affect circulation. Ensure there are no loose ends that can get entangled in any object. Lastly, you must avoid covering the fingertips. There are some primary principles of bleeding control. They are alert, identify and compress. Let's explore the principles one by one. First, before creating an alert, you must ensure your safety. If you become injured, you will not be able to help the victim. Let's look at the steps. You need to provide care to the injured person if the scene is safe for you to do so. If, at any time, your safety is threatened, attempt to remove yourself and the victim if possible from danger and find a safe location. Lastly, you need to protect yourself from bloodborne infections by wearing gloves if available. The next step is to call 112 or tell someone else to call. It will notify emergency medical responders and depending on the situation, emergency medical services or EMS to respond to the scene. In case of bleeding, find the source of the bleeding. Open or remove the clothing over the wound to see it clearly. Then. Look for and identify life-threatening bleeding. Do you know what life-threatening bleeding is? Let's learn about it. There are a few indicators of life-threatening bleeding, including excessive bleeding, continuous bleeding from the wound, blood pooled on the ground, blood-soaked clothes, blood-soaked bandages and loss of limbs or part of an arm or leg. In the case of compress, if you do not have a trauma first aid kit, apply direct pressure on the wound by covering the wound with a clean cloth and applying pressure by pushing directly on it with both hands for life-threatening bleeding from an arm or leg. If a tourniquet is available, apply the tourniquet and for life-threatening bleeding from an arm or leg and a tourniquet is not available or for bleeding from the neck, shoulder or groin, pack. That is, stuff the wound with a bleeding. Control or a hemostatic gauze, plain gauze or a clean cloth and then apply pressure with both hands. Let's next learn some processes for bandaging unusual wounds. There are several processes for bandaging unusual wounds such as penetrating injury, impaled objects, avulsion or skin flap and amputations or unattached avulsion. Click each type of wound to learn more. In case of penetrating injury, 
cover any open wound completely and examine the patient for possible exit wounds. In case of impaled objects injury, do not remove impaled objects unless impaled in the cheek obstructing the airway or creating any hindrance in administering CPR, control bleeding and stabilize the object with a bulky dressing and apply a bandage. In the case of avulsion or skin flap, clean the wound surface, place skin flap to the original position, control bleeding and cover with bulky dressing and apply a bandage. Lastly, in the case of amputations or unattached avulsion, clean the wound, control bleeding, apply dressing and bandages and keep the amputated part cool and moist but not wet. Now, let's take up another activity to check your understanding of dressing. Complete the sentence by selecting the appropriate option and click Submit. Now, let us look at some pre-hospital treatments for special situations such as eye, ear, nose and neck injuries. If the eye injury is related to a puncture wound or impaled object, we should follow the given steps, bandage the good eye to prevent movement of injured eye. In an unconscious patient, close the eyes before blindfolding the patient to prevent the eyes from drying, which may cause blindness. Treat an extruded eye the same way as you would treat an eye with an impaled object. Do not try to put the eyeball back into the socket if it has been extruded. Cover it with a cup or cardboard cone before applying the bandage. Usually, blood, clear fluid or blood-tinged fluid draining from the ear may indicate skull fracture or severe head trauma. Pre-hospital treatment for ear injury is as follows. Never probe the ear, never pack the ear to stop bleeding and check for clear fluid, that is, CSF, which may indicate a skull fracture. Place a loose, clean dressing across the opening to absorb the fluids and do not apply pressure. Nosebleeds are an emergency that can be serious and should not be neglected. There may be a significant blood loss that results in shock. If the patient has a suspected skull fracture or spinal injury, do not try to stop the bleeding. Pre-hospital treatment for nose injury is as follows. Maintain open airway, pinch nostrils together or place a dressing between the upper lip and the gum and apply pressure. Keep the patient seated and still. Do not remove any object you may find inside the nose and for avulsions, apply a compressive dressing. Visible lacerations or other injuries in the case of neck injury can cause massive bleeding or air embolism. Sometimes it may lead to difficulty in speaking or loss of voice. Pre-hospital treatment for neck injury is as follows. Ensure airway is open, gloved hand over wound, apply occlusive dressing, apply pressure as needed, apply bandage on the dressing and immobilize cervical spine. Let's next see some abdominal and genital injuries. The abdomen contains solid and hollow organs. An inflammatory response may result from the contents of ruptured hollow organs, such as the stomach, large and small intestines, spilling into the peritoneal cavity and releasing digestive enzymes, acids, and bacteria. Even rupture of the solid organs such as liver, spleen, among others, can cause severe hemorrhage. Let's see some treatment procedures in case of abdominal injuries. The steps for treating abdominal injuries are as follows. Be alert for patient vomiting, cover all open wounds, do not try to put the exposed internal organs back, cover them with thick, Moist sterile dressing and keep exposed area warm by placing a dressing or towel over the occlusive dressing. Constantly monitor vital signs. Put patient in supine position. Treat for shock.
Genital injuries are also severe. Wounds to the genitals should be treated the same as any other wounds. However, special care and attention should be given to protect the patient's privacy. Let's see the roles of volunteers during soft tissue injuries. Volunteers can help responders in ensuring the safety of victims by clearing hazard present at incident site. They can help rescuers in carrying injured victims manually or on stretcher and medical first responders or MFRs in dressing and stabilization of injured victim. Volunteers can help medical staff in the maintenance of basic life support system. With this, we have come to the end of this module. Let's summarize the key points discussed in this module. In this module, we learnt that soft tissues include lymph vessels, nerves, blood vessels, fat, muscle, tendons, ligaments, cartilage and other fibrous tissues to stop a life-threatening illness or injury from getting worse. Pre-hospital care is essential for treating closed wounds, open wounds, eye, ear, nose and neck injuries, abdominal injuries and genital injuries. The primary principles of bleeding control are alert, identify, and compress any substance applied to a wound to assist in stopping bleeding and preventing infection is referred to as dressing. Any substance used to keep a dressing in place is referred to as a bandage. The two types of dressing are occlusive dressing and bulky dressing. Dressings are applied to control the bleeding and apply the dressing using the aseptic technique. Ensure the bandage and dressing are comfortable, secure and firm without being so tight as to impede circulation. Now, it is time to check your understanding of the topic. This is an evaluation exercise. All questions are equally weighted. You need to score at least 60% to pass the test. Read the questions carefully and select the appropriate options. Congratulations!